Hello, all of you. I hope all of you can hear me and see the presentation which I've loaded. Just say yes or no if you can hear me and see the presentation. All of you. Hello. I think Harneet, everyone. Okay. Perfect. Just allow me one minute. Other people are also joining in. Um, so as soon as everyone is here, we'll start with the session. Meanwhile, if you want, I can take up a couple of questions which you have got. Dashti, Khadija, Harmeet. If you have any question, I can take up all those questions for you. By the way, how's the preparation going? Preparation for CAT 2020. I hope all of you have seen the notification of Nasi Kunji examination, which I hope all of you are writing in this year. So Nasi Kunji dates are out. Yes. Uh, recently, by tonight or by tomorrow morning, there will be one more video which we are uploading on YouTube, which is with respect to uh, the content syllabus that you have to study for Nasi Kunji and how different and distinct Nasi Kunji preparation would be from CAT. Yes, the answer is yes, that there would be a separate preparation that you will need to have for Nursi Muji symbiosis or possibly for uh, IFT also. Because talking about one aspect of it, let's say about logical reasoning. Now, logical reasoning uh, in fact, very much more short and straightforward. All what you have is four puzzle set and the game is over. Only in the fourth puzzle set, each of them will have four questions and 16 questions of hilarious over, just over. And four sets on data division, each of them will have four questions each. The case is over. This is not the case with your NMAX, SNAP, and the other examination because over and above puzzle, you also have got analytical reasoning. So, all these things which are going on in your today's or uh, let's say upcoming webinars or uh, the live classes which are going on now, be it clocks and calendar or your uh, analytical reasoning subjects, the analytical reasoning subject will also come in the examination of Nelsimoji and Symbiosis, which does not come in CAT. Okay, so though the basic level of preparation is same, I repeat. Though the basic level of preparation is same, but once you are done with the basic level of preparation, you have to take up something which is little beyond, something which is little beyond that, which is as per a strategic plan of which exam you want to focus on. If the focus is on the system biases, the trajectory of your preparation will change. You will take up questions which are frequently asked in the examination, unlike a normal herd mentality. So one thumb rule which I want to give it to all of you is, do not follow what others are following. Very simple. Do not follow what the herd mentality is. The herd mentality says, Tum CAD ka focus karo, pura exam of But dost, aisa nahi hota. On a superficial level, I'll say yes. But unless you have not, do not have a strategic plan for other examinations of, of nursing Muji or Symbiosis, then yes, it's going to be difficult for you to crack the other examination. The question which has come to me now is, uh, if you talk to me about uh, talk to me about quant, okay. Though we say the overall preparations or the syllabus which comes in nursing Muji examination is as same as what comes in quant, I'll say superficially yes. But when you go granular, when you analyze the previous year paper patterns of CAT or NMAT, you'll see CAT is predominantly heavily weighted by chapters of number system, geometry, permutation, combination, and probability. These four uh, will give you a round. Mota Mota 14 to 16 questions out of the total 34 questions, which is not the case with Nursi Munji. Pali part Nursi Munji ka quant ka syllabus is along with data interpretation. I repeat, Nursi Munji ka quantitative aptitude section is inclusive of data interpretation section. I hope all of you have seen the recent video which you have uploaded. There are 36 questions which will come in quantitative aptitude section. Out of 36, almost 16 questions are from data interpretation. Matlab ye, अगर इतना कॉन्टेंट भी देख लिया मतलब सोलह क्वेश्चन मैंने कर लिए डेटा इंटरप्रिटेशन के और तेरह चौदह सवाल मैंने कर लिए तुम्हारे 
अरब पार्टी को अलजे बनते तो भी कट ऑफ आराम से निकल जाएगा तो भी कट ऑफ आराम से निकल जाएगा मोटा मोटा अभी कल आई गेस कल सुबह आपके पास वीडियो आ जाएगा यूट्यूब के ऊपर जहाँ पे आप देख सकते हैं कि फंडामेंटली कितना स्ट्रेटेजिकली अलग से पढ़ना पड़ेगा मुझे दृष्टि मुझे के लिए बट मोटा मोटा मैं आपको बता देता हूँ एग्जामिनेशन जोग्राफी कैट एंड मॉडर्न मैथ इज अर फॉर दैट एग्जामिनेशन इज इज क्लियर टू ऑल यू Okay, so in today's session, I'll repeat the today's session that we have called as operation proportion. We'll have the conception and the fundamental understanding of the chapter in this session. We'll see the previous pattern of the the question which has come from ratio and proportion, and I'll give you a direction to solve this question. The advanced level sessions of the ratio and proportion and in-depth analysis of previous paper will be done in your live session, which is going to happen today. So people who are session with will have to go for the 9 p.m. session, which is going to happen to you. Let's start with the session now. I repeat, all of me, I believe. Let's officially start with the session now. Now, topic that we have got for today is of ratio and proportion. Okay. The first thing is, do you think ratio and proportion, which are distinctly mentioned here, do you think both are same or both are different? Some people will say both are same. Some people will say both are different. As for my understanding, both are different. Whenever you compare one body with another, I repeat. whenever you compare one body with another anything which can be expressed in the form of a by b i repeat anything which can be expressed in the form of a by b will be simply called as a ratio for example if you have 5 rupees and i have 7 rupees then u versus i then u versus i is a ratio of 5 to 7 okay you have 5 and i have 7 it does not mean you are have exactly 5 and i have exactly 7 it may happen it may not happen but that's okay I can say you have a multiple of five and I have a multiple of seven. That's what you can say. So whenever two bodies are compared with each other, I repeat, whenever two bodies are compared with each other, then let's say the cost of a car is two lakh fifty thousand. The cost of a bike is fifty thousand. So bike versus car will be a ratio of bike versus car, which is fifty by two fifty. Likewise, whenever two bodies are compared with each other, that will be called as a ratio. But I repeat once again, imagine I have a total of seven. Imagine I have a total of twelve rupees, and I have two people A and B. I have a total of twelve rupees. I give five rupees to A, and I give seven rupees to B. I give five rupees to A, and I give seven rupees to B. You can say the ratio of A to B is nothing but five to seven. But if I say what is the proportion of A, the question now is, what do you think is the proportion of A? The proportion of A is simple. The proportion of A is the value of A divided by the total value. It is the proportion of a, the value of a divided by the total value. Similarly, the proportion of b is the value of b divided by the total value. You know, a has got five rupees out of twelve, and b has got seven out of twelve. So the proportion of b is five out of twelve, and the, and the proportion of b is five upon five upon twelve. Proportion deals with totality. I repeat, proportion deals with totality, which means out of a total value, how much a has got and how much b has got, or how much c has got. Is what do you mean by proportion? Clear? So whenever two bodies have to be compared with each other, this is ratio. Whenever something has to be dealt out of total, that is a proportion. There are basic values which you should know. Some basic properties of ratio, which you guys have done in class eighth and ninth. Let me tell you one thing. If the concept of ratio and proportion is clear, the questions on percentage you can crack well. If you can crack questions on percentage, well, if you know the concept of percentage, the following subjects and topics is quite easy. Which means questions on time field distance, questions on time and work, questions on SI and CI, and questions on percentage. All these chapters can be solved quite easily if you know one chapter, which is ratio and proportion. Because the basics of all these is lies simply lies in ratio, and on the basis of ratio, you can make what percentage will be. Clear? Yeah? I hope all of you are familiar with the common terms of invert endo, alternate endo, or alternate endo, component endo, and dividend endo, which has been taught to you in class seventh and eighth. Which says, let's say if two ratios are equal, if a by b is as same as c by d, then invert endo says, then if I reverse the value, b by a will be as same as d by c. Similarly, if a by b is as same as c by d, then alternate endo says it's a by c, which is as same as b by d. Next is component endo. 
which says if a by b is as same as c by d, then a plus b by b is as same as c plus d divided by d, and then you have got something which is called as dividend also. Dividend of says if a by b is as same as c by d, then a minus b by b is as same as c minus d by d. If you divide the uh, third and the fourth property, you will get something like a by b. A plus B divided by A minus B is as same as C plus D divided by C minus D. Now all these things, now all these things have been taught to you in your school grade seventh and eighth. So there's no value addition which I can give it to you. अगर किसी को समझ में आया तो बहुत अच्छी बात नहीं समझ में आया तो भी इससे भी ज़्यादा अच्छी बात. Because all these things does not be that much the limit. They talk about the cat level question. For solving the cat level questions of addition and proportion, all what you need is a very smart IQ. That's it. I repeat, all what I knew, all what you need is a very smart IQ. You have to read between the lines. The thumb rule of solving the questions of ratio and proportion is simple. When you read the questions, read the options along with the question. When you read the question, read the options along with the question. That's what is required. Before I proceed, let's say if I give you this question. The question is find the approximate answer. This is the ratio. You can say this is a ratio, or this is the approximation technique. Also, the question is: four three four one zero one is divided by three eight seven three two zero. The question is: find the question is: find the approximate answer. I repeat: the question is: find the approximate answer of four lakh thirty four thousand one zero one divided by three lakh eighty seven thousand three twenty. I know all of you. So tell me quickly, all of you, you are live with me. Tell me how many of you can solve the question in let's say ten seconds. The given questions have to be solved in ten seconds. Just comment yes or no. Just comment yes or no. कर सकते हो या नहीं कर सकते हो? Because the objective is we need to have a very solid IQ when we sit for the examination. The objective is we have to build upon the appetite and the attitude towards numbers or towards math for the for the examination. The question is four three four one zero one divided by three eight seven three two zero. The thumb rule is the thumb rule for the question. The thumb rule for the given question which I have given you is when the number of digits. I repeat, when the number of digits is same. When the number of digits is same in the numerator and the denominator. I repeat, when the number of digits is same in the numerator and the denominator. All what you have to focus is on the first digit. All what you have to focus. Is on the first two digit. The first two digit is forty three, and the last two digit on the and the first two digit of the denominator is also thirty eight. Since the number of digit is same, I am just neglecting the value which I have considered beyond the decimal. Technically, I have divided the value by let's say ten thousand here, and I have divided the value that one thousand here, and I have divided the value by one thousand here. The objective is simple. I repeat. The objective is whenever you have the similar values, similar number of values in or digits in the numerator and denominator, just focus on the first digit. You can get the exactly same answer with 43 by 38. You will get exactly the same answer by 434 divided by 387. You will get exactly the same answer by 4341 by 3873. And likewise, any के जितने भी digit लगा दो the answer will be same. So my fucking objective is why do why the hell I should Focus on values which are big, which can scare me when I have got simple values with me. So I am sure, forty-three by thirty-eight. I repeat, forty-three by thirty-eight is not that difficult value in comparison with the question which is being given to you. So if you have your calculators open with you, I repeat, if you have your calculators open with you, see the approximate answer for this question, this question, and this question. Keep on adding the digit. The answer will not change. I repeat, the answer will not change. The answer comes with the first two digit only, and I'm sure all of you have the appetite of solving what is 43 by 38, right? So this question, first of all, is as simple as 43 by 38. All of you know the answer will be one point something. I repeat, all of you agree that the answer will be one point something. But the objective is all the options are close by. The objective is all the options are close by. So, boy, ये one के तो पर पक्के हैं क्योंकि this is 43 upon 38. Had it been 38 upon 38, the answer will be one. But this is 38 plus 5 upon 38. So it is one plus 5 upon 
the value is 1 plus 5 upon 38. So 1 is going to be common. So 1 I will remove. This value is 0 0.03, 0 0.12, 0 0.15 and 0.23. These are the values which I have with me. Which can determine which cons option will be or cons option will not be. Let's see how quickly can we solve 5 upon 38. What is 10 percentage? I repeat. What is 10 percentage of 38? All of you will agree that 10 percentage of 38 is 3.8. The above value is 3.8 plus 1.2 divided by 38. I repeat. The above value is 3.8 plus 1.2 divided by 38 because it is 5. So the answer will be 1.1x. The answer will be 1.1x. So the first option is not given. These are some options that I have to pass. Now the value is 1.2 more than 38. 1.2 more than 38. If the lower value, listen to me all of you. If the lower value is 1.2 divided by 36, so this value is how much? Roughly 0.3. How much? 0.3. Very good. All of you agree that the answer would have been 0.3. But the value of the denominator is slightly more than 36. It is 38. So the final answer will be close to 1.13, but it is less than 1.13. So the answer for the given question is 1.12. So the answer for the given question is 1.12. Though while explanation, I take some detailed explanation manner to teach you. But when you see the question in actual application, when you solve the paper, your mind should be so sharp that you understand the value is between 1.1 x is close around 1.1x. The last digit is something which you would have to forget. I repeat, the only thing that you have to work on for the given exam of CAT is one, your calculation speed, which is a mixture of your estimations, guesstimations, and approximation. And second is your conceptual understanding. If these two things are sorted, then whichever question comes to the examination, Whichever exam you give, you want to give CAT and that snap, all the things you can crack with. All the fucking things you can crack with. I hope you have understood it well. Let's go ahead. Okay. Now the first concept which I'm going to teach you now, the first concept which I'm going to teach you now is continuous ratio, which means, let's say if I have A's to B and if I have B's to C, the question is, I have A's to B and I have got B's to C. And the question is, find A's to B's to C. I have A's to B and I have B's to C. The question is, find A's to B's to C. But the A's to B is 2 to 3 and B's to C is 5 to 7. So, I have to know how much A's to B's to C combined ratio is and continuous ratio is. What is common among A, B and B, C? The value of B is common among B and C. The value of B is common among B and C. So this value I'll make common by taking the LCM. Either you can take the LCM approach or you can learn the continuous ratio approach. If A to B is, to, is given to you and B to C has been given to you and the question is about find a value of A is to B is to C. Then the value of A, I repeat, the value of A is taken from the product of first A and second B. It's A to B. The value of B is taken by multiplying the first value of B and the second value of B, which is B to B. And the value of C is taken by taking multiplying the values of B of first and C of second, which is B to C, which is AB, BB, and BC. For example, if A is to B is 2 to 3 and B is to C is 5 to 10, then A is to B is to C. It's nothing but 2 into 5 is 10, 3 into 5 is 15, and 3 into 7 is 21. The answer is... 10 is to 15 is to 21. Yes, all of you got the answer right. All of you got the answer right, which is 10 is to 15 is to 27. That's what the value would be, which is about continuous ratio. That's what the value is when you talk about continuous ratio. But the continuous ratio is going to go ahead. For example, if I have A to B, I have B to C, I have C to D. Let's say A to B is 2 is to 3, B to C is 3 is to 5, and C to D is 5 is to 7. This is what the value is. And my question is, find the value of A is to B is to C is to D. You will apply the same approach. I repeat, you will apply the same approach that you have done in the previous question. So 
the common thing between AB and BC is B. So I write in the same manner. The common thing between B and C and C and D is C. I write in the same manner. So if I want the value of A is to B is to C is to D. If I want the value of A is to B is to C is to D, imagine. Then the first value of A, I repeat, the first value of A will be nothing but A into B into C. Okay. The first value of A is nothing but A into B into C. The second value of B is B, B, C. B of first, B of second, and C of third. Third, it's B, B, and C. The third value of C is nothing but B into C into C. I repeat, it is B, C, and C. It is B of first, C of second, and C of third. And the value of D is taken from multiplying the value of B of first, C of second, and D of third, which is B, C, and D. I hope this part is clear. If I have to align this in the numerical value, which is being given to me, A is to B is 2 is to 3, B is to C is 3 is to 5, and C is to D is 5 is to 7. So the value of A is 2 into 3 into 5. The value of B is B, B, C, which is 3 into 3 into 5. The value of C is B into C into C, which is 3 into 5 into 5. And the value of D is nothing but B, C, and D, which is 3 into 5 into 7. I hope this part is clearly understood to all of you. I hope this part is clearly understood to all of you. But एक बात याद रखना exam में कभी कभी तुमको सिर्फ और सिर्फ सीधा A B C D एक साथ नहीं पूछा आएगा लेकिन ask you about a specific value B. So you can either note it that B is nothing but B B C, A is nothing but A B C, D is nothing but B C D, and the value of C is nothing but B C C. Likewise, also you can memorize the values. It is not a difficult case, which you can uh, forget in the given examination. It is an easy case. It is not a difficult case. Okay. So from the exam perspective, from the exam perspective, only one thing is important. That one thing is knowing the concept and knowing how to sort the equations which they have asked you. The important thing is the important, the most, most, most important part of exam preparation is comparison of ratio. Comparison of ratio means imagine if I have A by B. And if I have C by D, if I have A by B and if I have C by D, and the question is which value is more? For example, 81 by 84 is more or 79 by 83 is more. This is the value which they have given. 81 by 84 is more or 79 by 83 is more. These kind of values, usually the application of this is way much more prominent when you solve data interpretation questions of CAD examination. But however, over and above DI algebra questions, Arithmetic questions will also be dependent on this. So we'll spend roughly around 5-10 minutes in understanding how do you solve comparison-based questions. And I'll repeat all these techniques. All these techniques which we'll be learning will be nothing but shortcut technique. All these techniques which I will teach you now will be nothing but your shortcut technique. So I want all of you to be live and be more interactive by putting questions in the comment box which I have given you. There are three techniques which I'm teaching you now. There are three techniques which I teach you now. All these three techniques will be important from the exam of CAT, SNAP, and MAC. The first technique is the cross multiplication. The first technique is cross multiplication. Let's see. Imagine if I give you four, two values, 4 by 8 and 8 by 16. Imagine if I give you two values, 4 by 8 and 8 by 16. And if I ask you which of the following ratio is more. And if I ask you which of the following ratio is more, you will say uh, it's visible that both the values are same. It's visible, right? Both the values are same. But let's learn a technique which is called as cross multiplication. Cross multiplication says, take the numerator of this, multiply with the denominator of this. 4 16 is 64. So write 64 here. Right? 64 here, right? Similarly, now take the numerator of this and multiply with the denominator of this. 8 8 is also 
64. 8 8 is also 64. Since both the side values are same, since both the side values are same, you can also say that both the ratios are same. Both the ratios are same. But imagine if I give you 4 by 8, and if I give you 9 upon 15. If I give you four upon eight, and if I give you nine upon fifteen, and if I ask you now, tell me, dude, which value is more? What you can do? You will say four fifteen is sixty. What you can do? Four into fifteen is sixty, and you will do you will do nine eight is seventy-two. You will do nine eight is seventy-two. Whichever side is more, S one or S two, whichever side is more, that ratio will be more. You will say side two is more than side one, so nine upon fifteen is more than four upon eight. I hope you have understood this well. So you can say nine upon fifteen is more than four upon eight. This is the first technique. You multiply with the numerator into the denominator here. Take the numerator, multiply with the opposite denominator here. You will get a value which your value is more. That side is more. I hope this concept is clearly understood to you. Jo side badi, wo ratio bada. The objective is whatever side is more, that ratio will be more. Clear? Second is percentage change method. The second method which I'm giving you now is called as percentage change method. Let's see what percentage change method is. Imagine if I give you four by eight and eight by sixteen. Imagine if I give you four by eight and eight by sixteen. This is my numerator and this is my denominator. Take the percentage change. Take the percentage change in numerator and take the percentage change in denominator. Okay. Let's say four has become eight. You will say this value is changed by hundred percent each. If four is becoming eight, you will say this value is changed by hundred percent each. If eight is becoming sixteen, you will say this value is again changed by hundred percent each. This value is again changed by hundred percent each. So if the percentage change in numerator is as same as the percentage change in denominator, the left side value is as same as the right side value. The left side value is as same as the right side value. Right. But imagine if I give you the question which I have given you: four upon eight and nine upon fifteen. Four upon eight and nine upon fifteen. Four has become nine and eight has become fifteen. This is numerator and this is denominator. Tell me where do you see the change is more? Tell me where do you see the change is more? Is the change in numerator more or the change in denominator is more? See, four has becoming nine. Four is becoming nine. You say this value is changed by more than hundred percentage. Eight is becoming fifteen. This value is less than hundred percentage because double of eight is sixteen. This value is less than sixteen. This value is less than sixteen. I hope this is understood. So, if the percentage change in numerator is more than the percentage change in denominator, the right side value is more than the left side value. I repeat, if the percentage change in numerator is more than the percentage change in denominator, the right side value is more than the left side value. However, if it is four by eight, and let's say if it is seven by sixteen, you will say this value is changed by hundred percent each. This value is changed by seventy-five percent each. If you say the percentage change in denominator is more than the percentage change in numerator, then left value, which is the original value, is more than the new value. So four by eight will be more than seven by sixteen. Is this clear? I hope you have clearly understood this concept. This concept was nothing but percentage change method. But whatever we have solved till now, we have seen cross multiplication technique. We have seen percentage change method. In those may, kahin na kahin manual calculations were there. I want to get rid of this manual calculation. But I mean, I have not studied this in school. That manually calculate, do multiply, do. It's not time in my life. Then what method will you use? Well, the third method, which is the smartest method, is G by D method. Smartest method is G by D method, which is gap by denominator method. The third method, which I'm going to give you, is simple. This is gap by denominator method. This is the most important method which you should know. Imagine there are four values: thirteen by ten, nine by eight, fifteen by twelve, and seventeen by fifteen. 13 by 10, 9 by 8, 15 by 12, and 17 by 15. Imagine there are four values, and the question is find the maximum of all. And the question is find the maximum of all. So the third method will help you 
to solve this question or the bigger questions than this also in less than 20 30 seconds also or possibly less than 10 seconds also if you have a very sorted mind okay so pay at the most attention here abhi tak nahi samjha it's okay but ye method sabse important hai to ye aapko sabse pehle samajhna hai 10 by 10 9 by 8 15 by 12 17 by 15 okay all the lovely with me, the given method all the four values all the four values are more than one the 13 by 10 9 by 8 15 by 12 and 17 by 15 all the values are more than one if i ask you these values are how much more than one if i ask you these values are how much more than one you will say the first value is one plus three upon ten the second value is one plus one upon eight the third value is one upon three upon twelve and the fourth value is one plus two upon fifteen right one plus two upon fifteen now now i say all the values are one plus something so all the values are one plus something one plus x if I ask you 1 plus 1.2 is more than 1.15 is more, you will say 1.15 is more than 1.12 because 15 is more than 12. Why? Just because 15 is more than 12. So since 1 is common, so I'm taking this out. Since 1 is common, so I'm taking this out. 3 by 10, 1 upon 8, uh, 3 upon 12, and 2 upon 15 are the values which I have to compare. Now these are the values which I have to compare, right? Because 1 to sub is common. Tha. Though we are taking more time in explanation, but when you actually have to solve this, it will take 10 seconds to solve. Just for explanation, be with me. Now, the value 3 has been derived from 13 and 10. How do you get 3 from 13 and 10? By taking the gap between the values. How do you get 1 from 9 and 8, which is the gap between the values? How do you get 3 from 15 and 12? This is again the gap. And how do you get 2 from 17 and 15? This is again the gap. Okay. So I can say my numerator by denominator concept. The numerator of these values are nothing but the gap of the values. And the denominators of and the denominators are and the denominators are 10, 8, 12, and 15, which are the actual denominator, which are the actual denominator. Okay. So I want to maximize this because my question is in some way maximum. All the values are one plus something. So I want to maximize this something. I want to maximize this something. When do you see a new when do you so a ratio? A ratio which is in the form of A by B, or a ratio which is in the form of numerator by denominator. If you have to maximize this, when would this be maximum? When my numerator is maximum and my denominator is least. When my numerator is maximum and my denominator is least. For example, if I ask you 1 by 4 is more or 4 by 1 is more, you will say 4 by 1 is more because 4 is more than 1 and 1 is less than 4. If you have concept, you can solve this question very easily. You want only one thing. The gap should be maximum and my denominator should be least. Just two things I need. I repeat, the only and only observation which I need is two things. The gap between the values should be more and the denominator should be less. For example, again, I go 13 upon 10, 9 upon 8, 15 upon 12, and 17 upon 15. There are two things which I need. The gap between the values should be maximum and my denominator should be least. The gap between the values should be maximum and the denominator should be least. It is not done, right? Let's check the last two. 15 upon 12, the gap is of 3. 17 upon 15, the gap is of 2. You want the gap to be maximum. Where do you see the gap maximum? Here. You want the denominator to be less. 15 is less or 12 is more? Less. So you'll say 15 is less. So can you say 15 upon 12 is more than 17 upon 15? Here. The gap is more and the denominator is less. So you can say 15 upon 12 is more than 17 upon 15. You have the values 13 upon 10, 9 upon 8, 15 upon 12, and 17 upon 15. But you understood the last value is the least or possibly lesser than 15 upon 12. So I'm taking this out. If I compare 13 upon 10 and 15 upon 12, on both the sides, the gap is 3. On both the sides, the gap is 3. If the gap is common, the answer depends on denominator. The denominator has to be less. 10 is less or 12 is less? You will say 10 is less than 12. Can you say 13 by 10 is more than 15 upon 12? All the three will agree. All the three will say 13 upon 10 is more than 15 upon 12. So check this out. I am left with only two values. 13 upon 10 and 9 upon 8. Say first of all, which is 13 upon 10. And 9 upon 8. These two values. Either you can cross multiply to get the answer, which is easy. 
available or you can again go ahead with the g by d approach here the gap is 3 here the gap is 1 so gap wise this is more but you want the denominator to be less 8 is less than 10 so dost ek jagah denominator chhota dikh raha hai ek jagah numerator bada dikh raha hai but you want to combine both either you make the denominator same i repeat either you make the denominator same or you can make the gap same how do you make the denominator same by taking the lcm lcm of 8 and 10 is 40 but ab tum thode bade ho chuke ho so let me tell you how do you make the gap same here the gap is 3 here the gap is 1 so multiply and divide by the value which you need gap of 3 this value will become 27 upon 24 gap is 3 the gap is 3 13 upon 10 27 upon 24 on both the sides the gap is 3 and 3 the answer depends on which value is smaller in denominator so 10 is smaller or 24 is smaller you said 10 is smaller so the highest value is 13 upon 10 is this clear i hope all of you have understood this all what I require, all what I require, if all the values are more than one, all the ratios, the objective is if all the ratios are more than one and you want to find the maximum of all. And if, if you want to find the maximum of all, think like an inverted pyramid. The gap should be maximum. And my denominator should be. And my denominator should be. I hope this is clearly understood to all of you. बताओ सर की अगर ये सारी वैल्यू वन से कम होती जैसे टेन अपॉन थर्टीन एट अपॉन नाइन इसे को उल्टा कर दो ट्वेल्व अपॉन फिफ्टीन और फिफ्टीन अपॉन सेवनटीन अगर ये वैल्यूज एग्जैक्टली exactly उल्टी होती अगर ये पूरी वैल्यूज एग्जैक्टली exactly उल्टी होती और मुझे पूछा होता कि फाइंड द मैक्सिमम फॉल टू चेंज द पिरामिड दिस वे दिस टाइम वी नीड द गैप टू बी लीस्ट दिस टाइम वी नीड द गैप टू बी लीस्ट एंड द डिनोमिनेटर शुड बी मैक्सिमम इतना ही करना है कुछ भी नहीं करना है अह पार्ट ऑफ 13/10 and 9 upon 8. You can either multiply them, you can either multiply them to get the answer, or you can make, here the gap is 3, here the gap is 1. If I have to make the gap same, here the 3 is 3, so you can multiply it to 3. It's 9, 3 is 27, 8, 3 is 24. I repeat, 27 upon 24 is the same value. If you cut them, this is 9 upon 8 only. Okay, just for your understanding, I'm giving you like this. So now 13 upon 10 and 27 upon 24, on both the sides, the gap is same. So if the gap is same, the answer depends on denominator. The denominator has to be least. Where do you find denominator less? 13 or 24? 10, no. So the answer is 13 upon 10 is maximum. Sarat, when the values are more than one, and if you want to find the maximum, the gap should be maximum. The gap between the values should be maximum. And my denominator should be least. I repeat, the denominator should be least. When the values are less than one, and if you want to find the maximum, the gap should be least. And my denominator should be maximum. How much may I ask for? All of you, is this clear? If the gap is not same, so if the gap is not same, I repeat again, Atharva, the objective is the gap should, so you have to compare the gap and the denominator both. You want the gap in the value to be maximum and the denominator to be less. That's what you would have to look into. Is this clear to all of you? It's an easy concept. This concept is very important for data interpretation. Okay, now if I give you this question. Let's see if you have this question. 
day seven 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 two eight. <clears throat> the question says seven seven two eight has been distributed to A, B, C, and D. Has been distributed to A, B, C, and D. The ratio of A to B has been given to you as two to three. The ratio of B to C has been given to you as uh, two to five, and the ratio of C to D has been given to you as five to seven. So that's what has been given to you. And the question is find share of D. So, जब भी total में से कोई एक division value निकालनी होती है, you want the proportion. The value of D is being taken out by value of D divided by A plus B plus C plus D. ऐसा निकालना पड़ेगा आपको. So I tell you one thing is आप ये ratio तो निकाल सकते हैं. I have taught you how to solve continuous ratio A B B C and C D. I have taught you this, right? Now if you have learned this part, if you have learned this part. You know the value of D. You know the value of D. Is taken from the last value by multiplying B, C, and D. You got to multiply B, C, and D, which means the value of D is taken out by three into five into seven, right? Okay. When I say a value has been multiplied by three into five into seven, can I say this whole value is the multiple of five? Can I say this value is the multiple of five? Yes or no? Most of you will agree with me that yes, this value should be divisible by five, which means. Whatsoever the value of d may be, this need to be a multiple of five. All what I need to do is go back to the options and see which value is a multiple of five. There is only one value multiple of five. So even if you do not solve the question, I repeat, even if you do not solve the question, if you have a smart IQ, you can still solve the question. Conventional approach, conventional approach is find a value of a, find a value of b, find a value of c, find a value of d, and then divide. D upon A B C D into seven seven two eight will get the answer. But yes, if you understood the value of D is a multiple of five because this is having five in common. All what you need to do is just check, just check which value is multiple of five. Is this clearly understood to all of you? So again, I repeat the thumb rule for clearing the paper. The thumb rule of clearing the paper. is simple it is simply about you need to have a very common understanding of how numbers are that's one second is you have to read the options along with the question you have to read the options along with the question if i give you this next question since all of you also have a further class at 9 o'clock this is cat 2012 question this is cat 2012 question so I'll, let's see this question i want all of you to solve this question along with me I want you to solve this question along with me. This question, the question which I have given you here, is can has to be solved by using the concept of average and ratios together. This concept has to be solved by using the concept of average and ratio together. The question says, and this is the actual CAT question. This is 2012 question. The question says. Three math class X, Y, and Z. Three math class X, Y, and Z. Take an algebra test. Three math class X, Y, and Z. Take an algebra test. The average score of X. They say the average score of X is thirty-three. The average score of Y is seventy-six. The average score of Z is eighty-five. That's what has been given to you. That is what has been given to you. And the question says. And the question which is being given to you is the average of all the students who are studying. The average of all the students who are studying in X and Y together. The average of all the students studying in X and Y together is seventy-three. The average of all the students who are studying in Y and Z together is eighty-one. That's what has been given to you. The students who are studying in X and Y, if they club together, the average becomes seventy-nine, and the average of Y and Z together is eighty-one. And the question is find the combined average of all the three classes, which is x, y, and z combined. The question is find the combined value of x, y, and z. The question is find the combined value of for combined average of x, y, and z. This concept has been taken by weighted average. How do we get weighted average? If you know, want to know what is the total average of whole class. The overall average of the whole class, which is a weighted average, is number of students who are studying in A 
multiplied with the average of a plus number of students who are studying in let's say this is x number of students studying in x multiplied with the average of x number of students studying in y with the average of y let's say b plus the number of students who are studying in z let's say n multiplied with the average of z this has to be divided by total number of students i repeat this has to be divided by total number of students who are studying there that's how you can find the average or the weighted average this is a concept of school which you guys have done before but this is going to be difficult because in this case i do not know the value of n has it been given to you the number of people who are studying in a b and c or x y and z it has not been given to the number of people who are studying in a x y and z then how can you solve this question the question is how can you solve this question when you do not know the number of people who are studying in x y and z you know average is total value divided by number of value so total is average into number of value this value and i do not know it to the any end if i do not know the value of n then how do you solve the question so we'll possibly solve this question by using some smarter approach let's see it say the average of x is 83 and the average of y is 76 the average of x is 83 and the average of y is 76 and the overall average is how much the overall average of x and y is 79 x and y is how much 79 the concept of average has been derived from the game of tug of war the concept of average has been derived by the concept of tug of war i hope all of you know what tug of war is some people are trying to pull the rope on either side some people are trying to pull the rope on either side the rope getting pulled on either side the rope getting pulled on either side will be dependent on number of people standing and the weight of people two things number of people and the weight if i say weight of each as uh, the weight of everyone who standing on either side is same but the rope got pulled on the right side but the rope got pulled on the right side can i say the right side will have more number of people than the left side you will agree with me similarly if i say the rope got pulled on the left side so can i say the left side will have more number of people than the right side you will again agree with me but if i say the rope did not move at all the rope did not move at all you will agree that the number of people standing on either side you will agree that the number of people who are standing on the either side is same the number of people who are standing on the either side is same right same is the concept of average same is the concept of average some people are trying to pull the average on either side the answer is closer to that value where number of people are more where number of people are more let's see this now see the gap between 79 and 76 is only 3 the gap between 79 and 83 is 4 so where do you see the gap is less the question is where do you see the gap is less gap is less on y so if the gap between the uh, the overall average and the average of y is closer to y then can i say the number of people in y is more than the number of people in x because only if number of people in y is more than x y will pull the average so by doing this observation looking at this observation you will say y is more than x similarly if i look at y and z y is 76 z is 85 the overall average is 81 the difference of 81 and 85 is 4 difference of 81 and 76 is 5 where do you see the gap is less 4 is less 4 belongs to z can you say z has pulled the average towards himself can i say z has pulled the average towards himself so can i say z has more number of people than y can i say z has more number of people than y if you have understood this you have understood one thing z is more than y and y is more than x this is with respect to number of people this is with respect to number of people right agar itna samajh mein aa gaya to bang on the answer will be your in 5 seconds they say the average of y and z is 81 the average of y and z is 81 what is missing in total average the con the value of x is missing x is on 83 can i assume now if the average of y and z is 81 i can assume if i pull y and z together if i pull y and z together everyone gets 81 right what is the concept of average the concept of average says some people are below average some people are above average and they have to meet when would they meet 
by taking the values which are above average and giving it to values which are below average so that they can meet for example if one value is on 2 second value is on 4 they will meet on 3 which is the average similarly if i have to make if i have to make x and y z meet if i have to make x and y z meet to find the overall average the overall average will always be between 81 and 83 Overall average will always be between 81 and 83. If I look at the option, this is only an option, which is 81.5, which is following the criteria. Some of you will disagree, and someone will say that if 82 is also available, the midpoint of 81 and 83 is 82. So why the hell the answer is not 82? You can argue with me this whole point also. That why not the overall average is 82? I'll say no. The answer is 81. Because let's say now why is there is one pool and X is the second pool? Tell me which will have more number of people. Why is there is more number of people or number of people in X is more? We understood why in Z is more than X. No, so who is going to pull the average? You will say why in Z will pull the average. Why in Z will pull the average? If why in Z is pulling the average, the answer will always be between the midpoint and the lowest more lower most point, which is eighty one. So between 81 and 82, there's only one value. So the answer for this question is 81.5. Yes, so uh, you can solve the question by using mixture allegation technique also. But so there's something beyond mixture allegation. Mixture allegation will give you the ratio, actual ratio of number of people in X, Y, and Y Z. <coughs> Then you have to combine X, Y, and Y Z to form X is to Y is to Z. Then only you can multiply the average of x into a, the average of y into the number of people, plus the average of z into the number of people, multiply with the overall ratio x y z. ये करने से आंसर आएगा. But this is yes. Only thing I want, the only and only thing which I want, if you have a clear understanding, if you have a clear understanding, then it is not difficult. Z has small number of people. Yes, Z has maximum number of people because The reason is simple. Y and Z was seventy six, eighty five, and the combined average is eighty one. The difference between eighty one and eighty five is four. The difference between eighty one and seventy six is five. So wherever the gap is less, you understand this. Wherever the gap is less, that value has pulled the average. So you will say Z will pull the average. So I repeat, Z has more number of people than Y. Y has more number of people than X. So y and z has maximum number of people than x. y and z combinedly was on 81. x stand alone was on 83. I have to make them meet. But in both cases, where will it come from? Where will 81 or 83 come from? There is only one value between 81 and 83, which is 81.5. So the answer is 81.5. Is this clear? Is the point clear to all of you? I hope this point is clear, and time has also come where you have to go for your live class. As you know, your live class is scheduled at 9 p.m., so I don't want any one of you to be late. You have understood the concept of uh, ratio and proportion, and today's class that we have got is on data integration for some of you. So go back, bang on with all the concepts that you have learned in today's webinar. And apply those in the tables and bar graph concept, which is available today in your session. So thank you so very much for being with me now. Just one request: if you have liked the session, please like the uh, click on the like button and share with your friends also, so that all of the other friends also of yours will get to know about uh, some of the important techniques which are relevant for their management examination. It's eight fifty-five now. All of you have to go for the nine p.m. class. Not if you have to be late, and we'll see you tomorrow. So one thing which I want to tell you before we go, before we close this session, that is, now onwards every day you will be having webinar. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Every day you will be having webinars from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. There are from there are some senior stalwarts who are coming from I M Ahmedabad and Bangalore who will also take some strategic sessions with respect to your preparation guidelines and. Um, The study plan that you need to follow. So I want all of you to 
freeze this time 8 to 9 pm is going to be only and only for mbap all you have to be live with us for all the sessions which we have planned for you so 8 to 9 pm every day you have to come online for the given session all right then so if you have any questions on the gear from today's session you can take this up in the doubt solving session also i'm okay with that and if not then i'll see you in the today's live class which we have at night thank you so much for being with us